As much as it pains me to admit it, I used to be this guy. I find it utterly preposterous that Megatron transforms into a handgun. This renders him completely helpless in his alternative mode. And how can he possibly shrink down small enough to where he can be wielded by one of his fellow Decepticons, or even a human? This is a flagrant violation of the law of conservation of- Shut up! The good news is, I'm not that guy anymore. How do I love the Megatron gun? Let me count the ways. The first, most obvious, and most subjective is how amazingly wicked it looks. This will be lost on anyone who hasn't seen Trigun, but it reminds me a little bit of Ash's Long Colt, just shortened and scoped. Another thing is uh, if you look here, you'll notice that it almost fits my hand. The reason this is important is that that means it probably would fit a regular adult size hand versus my giant gorilla paws. And the reason that's important is that it means it would not fit a child's hand, ergo it was designed for an adult collector, hence my man-childness is justified. Woohoo! I'm marginally less pathetic! Just kidding. I'm as pathetic as I've ever been, and in all likelihood ever will be. I wouldn't have minded a bit of light and sound. This clicky trigger thing's pretty weak. But that's a minor complaint next to its otherwise greatness. You're so pretty, Megatron Gun. I wish we were both hot college girls. Aww. Best of all, now that I have this as a prop, I can finally half-acidly be every character in a 70s cop show without ever leaving my chair. Which is just what I'm gonna do! You can flip down the cover things and pretend that it's like the super positron charge-up mode. I don't know. Unfortunately, doing so reveals Megatron's dirty little secret that his gun is just him doing a sideways pretzel with these little kibble chunks covering it all up. Big nasty robot time! Uh, I mentioned these wing bits a couple of seconds ago. I feel reasonably confident in my guess that these have inspired a fair amount of fanboy rage just because they're so unlike anything that was on the original figure. But for my part, I love them. I think they're fantastic. They really just make the figure for me. He's like a glorious angel of death. Okay, I'm never doing that again. I'm particularly troubled by the fact that long hair apparently just makes me look like an ugly chick. I was going for a ridiculous goth dude, but I... Guess old sickly lesbian will have to do. The transformation's actually a load of fun, especially if you don't have any friends. And it's also quite complex, so it lets you feel like you've done something with your day. He's towering and authoritative, but unfortunately, like so many of his Decepticon lackeys, he apparently believes the ability to stand up is a sign of weakness. So he leads by example, I guess. Okay, perfect. So now that we're on camera, you decide you're stable. Thanks for embarrassing me in front of easily two dozen people. Now, he's pretty poseable, especially for a figure this big, although the cannon gets in the way some, and also basically every joint he has is ratcheted. So he's really well articulated, but only in like 20 degree increments. But what does that matter, really? I mean, this isn't a figure you pose. This is a figure you have standing tall and fierce and beefy and hopefully not falling over. Now, considering all of the Henke stuff I've reviewed already and all of the other Henke stuff I'm going to review, uh, you can be forgiven for thinking, Hey, are you one of those Japan-liking people? Rest assured, I hold no more affection for Japan itself than a heroin junkie does for his dealer. Uh, exactly as much, in fact. Most of my Henke purchases have just been matters of circumstance. I mean, sure, I like the colors better on Henke smokescreen, but I bought the Henke Seekers mainly just because they could be had fairly cheap. 
and Henke Red Alert mainly because that's the only way he exists. But with the possible exception of the aforementioned smokescreen, I hadn't yet come upon an instance where I could say that the Henke version of a figure was absolutely better. Until now. Do I recommend this figure? Yes, emphatically. But if you're going to get him, please, for the love of everything black and silver, go with the Henke version and not his appallingly flamboyant classics counterpart. Constructicons, merge for the kill! Not that there's anything inherently wrong with appalling flamboyance, but on Megatron? No. I hate you, Starscream. You're such a bitch.